you did something that your teenager didn't like at all and she or he gives you the silent treatment for three days you ask them what they want to eat no answer the door to their room is closed no answer you literally stand next to them and ask them a question and they don't they they act like if you were not there does it hurt you how do you feel another scenario is they come to you and you explain something and they tell you yeah that's because you're old are you offended in many cases many moms that I know would be and frankly for me it would depend less and less but you know we're human beings we're not robots so welcome to tonight's uh, live I really wanted to do this live because lately since I started talking about love and heart-centered parenting I had several moms who came to me telling me stories that resemble the ones I just told you and they were offended they were hurt sometimes irritated and that really solidifies what I'm going to talk about uh, Thursday this is just a tiny sample of what we're going to talk about in the masterclass this Thursday that's going to be um, in my, uh, my, my membership but you can also attend if you're not a member and we're going to talk about all those instances where I call it your choosing and I want to mention that it's not necessarily a conscious choice but we're still choosing to get offended let me explain you why explain to you why we let's say that someone came to you with a present and you refuse the present who does the present belong to and if you want just let me know here what do you think who does the present belong to before I wait for the answers because I'm not gonna wait in case you come and watch that on replay by the way if you're here on replay let me know do uh, a little hi hashtag replay or hashtag hi and I know that you watch that on replay if you don't accept a present that means it doesn't belong to you you give it back to the person who gave it to you but in the two cases that I mentioned tonight we are if you find yourself unable to do that that means you unconsciously are choosing to get offended or to get hurt and before you jump on me let me explain what I mean you choose based on what is relevant to you if your teen was coming to you and telling you in fact close your eyes now and imagine that your teen is really his his or her attitude is really maybe nasty even not nice and they come at you and they say you're a mermaid how do you react or another example I'm so tired of you you always do that to me you always eat lizards insane right why because you know that one you're not a mermaid you're sure you're not a mermaid maybe some people are not sure but <laughs> I suspect most of you are sure they are not mermaids so you don't feel even you don't even feel that it's relevant and the second you don't eat lizards you know that for a fact so as you can see we only accept and let in what is relevant to us so if they come at you and don't talk to you you choose to get offended based on 
what you make that mean. I hope it makes sense. If you're watching that later, let me know. Because let's say that you had a team that spoke all the time and you were tired from listening. If they stopped talking, maybe you would appreciate. If you knew they stopped talking to let you rest, maybe you would appreciate. But that's not the case. In that case, you, t you take it as a direct attack to you. And that's why, unconsciously, it means that you're under threat. So you, f you have to feel offended. If you are a respectful uh, human being to yourself, if you respect yourself, somebody comes to you with an attack, a verbal attack, you have to feel offended. Um, if somebody doesn't talk to you and you value love and attention, you have to feel hurt. But it is because of the meaning that you attach to the actual incident. It is not because of the incident itself. So it is a choice based on some unconscious parameters that have been imprinted in you. So that's what we're going to work with um, Thursday. We're going to uncover some parameters that are yours, your customized because yours may not resemble mine. For example, let me give you an example. If somebody comes to me and say, oh, that's because you're an immigrant, depending on what came before that remark, it can be hurtful or not. Depending on how I feel about being an immigrant, if I feel that it is a positive thing or a negative thing, I may be hurt and offended or not. Same thing with the old. A lot of our teenagers consider us old, and so did we when we were teenagers. For us, 40s, 50s in my case, it's old. When I was 22, I remember I didn't want to date someone who was a great guy. He was 30, 31, I think. I was like, ooh, dear, it's old. Now the standards changed a lot, but that's how I felt. That was not an insult. That was just how I felt. And depending on what we attach to the fact of being old, I talked about that in one of my previous lives. I, I had three and one of them didn't make it. I had to delete it because it, my phone kept on disconnecting. I was in my car yesterday waiting for my son to uh, at the doctor's and I said, you know what, I'm going to do a live. And some didn't make it because it was, I think, the heat on my cell phone was also not making it easy for my phone. So being old in certain culture, cultures and civilizations is revered. It means wisdom. It means knowledge. It means experience. In our culture, Mm -mm, not so much. It means more like obsolete. Has done, has done, has had its time. Even if we're talking about technology, but even people. And I hope it's going to change. It's changing maybe, but so far that's what it is. So based on what you attach to what's going on as far as meaning, you react a certain way because it is imprinted in you. And I wanted to remind you of that so that next time, maybe when they say something, if you feel yourself reacting, remember about imprint. Remember about what you attach to it as a meaning. It may not be what they attach to it as a meaning. And what they expect from you as a reaction may not be the one you want to give them. Because sometimes they do stuff to make us react. What if you were reacting in a way that is totally foreign to them? From experience, I'm telling you, it freaks them out. And they will pay more attention. 
I remember whispering to my kids once when they were young <laughs> and they really got scared and I was not particularly happy about something. I wanted for them to make sure that they would listen. So how are you cho choosing to get offended by your teenager? That's a question that I think would be very beneficial for you to ask yourself. Now, when you're reflecting on it, in the moment, after you got offended, because at the beginning, when you're going to make changes, you're going to react after fact and be able to learn looking backwards. The more you progress in your self-worth work, the more you can catch it in the moment. And when you start being really advanced, you can catch it before the moment. And if you really are serious about it, join us tomorrow night at 6, 6 p.m. Pacific time. There is the link here in the description of this video. We'll work on not only reacting before, but starting to rewire your brain based on your, your history. Rewire your brain so that you don't react to your own trigger with your teenager and the recurring um, opportunities for being hurt and offended based on what they're doing and how you're interacting in your own house. That will also be an opportunity for you to ask questions. I can train and train you. Yes, it's brain training and energy work, but I can coach you on the spot. So as I mentioned, the link is in the description and I really, really hope that you're going to take today's questions and use it to your advantage. Because believe me, it's an awesome, awesome question. And I have discussions with my uh, son very often about what words mean and what, what meaning is attached to them and what if we decided otherwise, what impact it, it would have on our life. Because their vocabulary compared to mine is something else. So start using empowering questions and you will get empowering results. I hope to see you on Thursday. I may do a new live tomorrow, I don't know yet. It's going to depend on time. And as always, you can always put a comment here with a question. If you want to contact me privately, send me a private message here. Or if you're watching somewhere else, because I will put that video on YouTube as well. You can uh, visit singlemomsdoingitall.com and send me an email through there. Meanwhile, have a peaceful evening, week, and I wish more peaceful interactions with your teens or teenagers. Mwah.